Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gagnon, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett and we're here with The Ramble. We go until midnight Eastern Daylight Time on the eastern seaboard of the United States of America coming to you from New York City. And uh, in about 25 minutes from right now, we're going to be talking with our citizens panel and there's a lot to talk about. Lots happened over the weekend, you know what. Yes, Mr. Crazy has gotten even crazier, and uh, we'll get to that and our and our citizens panel. But first, I think that it would be a good idea if we went and talked to our old friend. We love talking to this guy. Hello, everybody. It's time now to go out to the other coast of the United States, to San Francisco, and the wonderful dulcet tones of and the musical stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Uh, yeah. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, that was, of course, the uh, the name of uh, one of the worst television shows in history. <laughs> Hello, Larry. <laughs> yeah, you remember? And who was in that? McLean Stevenson. Right. Who was actually, you know, he was a very funny guy. Yeah. And he... Uh, he made a big mistake. He left, he left MASH early. Yeah. Uh, was it for Hello, Larry? Yes. I mean, he well, he left because he figured he could have more of a career than just MASH. Right. And so he gave up what was the biggest hit show in television to go start another show called Hello, Larry, which lasted, what, 13 weeks, maybe? <laughs> if that. <laughs> and is considered one of the most colossal failures in history. And I think after that, McLean Stevenson didn't have much of a career. He was pretty much done. I was thinking uh, the, the other person, that uh, Shelley Long, left Cheers and was pretty much done after that. Yep, yep. So, you know, I mean, a lot of people... So we're not the only ones that have made bad decisions, is what we're saying. That, 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 we, we revel in other people's bad decisions because <laughs> it makes us seem fine. Here's the thing. It was uh, a... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of other people who've done this. What happens is they get a hit TV show, and they think that that is their ticket to stardom. And when you think yeah. of how many of those people who were in hit TV shows went on to a larger career, you could count them on your one hand. You know, uh, I can think of a few. Bruce Willis went on to a good movie career after uh, Moonlight. Moonlighting, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, late '80s. That was huge, yeah. and he left that. But he, yeah, he he survived. George Clooney left um, ER, uh, ER, and had a very successful career. But there are a lot of other people who just leave their series and think, "Oh, I'm gonna, I got it made now." And people, yeah, I think in this business, if you got something that's working, you better ride it into the ground. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't leave it immediately, you know. Um, what was his name? The guy was on The Office. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, Steve Carell? Steve Carell did not leave The Office, but can, went on and made his movie career before he left The Office. Yeah, head your bet. Exactly. In other words, get that movie career going before you quit your day job. Mm-hmm. You know. But uh, no, McLean Stevenson, biggest, biggest mistake in the history of television, I think. And I think uh, I saw Larry Gelbart. They were, this, they were pissed that he left the show. That's why they, when they wrote, uh, remember the, the last episode, he, he was killed off. They did kill him yep. off, didn't they? Yeah, he was died in a uh, plane crash that was leaving the uh, match thing. And uh, I'd, I'd never, I mean, I was young when I was watching that. I, I just... I'd never seen anyone killed off in a sitcom, so I remember it really shocked me. They were that mad that he left, huh? Yeah, they were really pissed off. Yeah, so. Yeah. 
uh, Larry Gelbart said, and McLean Stevenson died fairly young. He, he said he left too soon, and then he left too soon. <laughs> well, uh, what's his name? Uh, Goodman uh, left uh, Roseanne, mm -hmm. and they killed him off. And then when, oh, they, yeah, then when right. they had the reboot, they had to have an excuse of why he was still alive. <laughs> and they made some, like, passing remark on the show, like, I thought you were dead. And he said, ah, that's just a rumor. You know, and then they just dismissed it that way and then went on with the, with the show, which mm -hmm. then, of course, got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> the mo uh, oddly enough, the most successful show ever to get canceled. I guess it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of another. Yeah, I can think of shows that were successful that then ran their course and then were canceled. But I can't think of a show that in the middle of its success was canceled. There may be one, but I can't name it. That's a great trivia question. Yeah, what... Uh and now, the funny part is, Roseanne, after that whole deal, there are people chasing her to do a series. Uh, well, sure, you would make money off her. Why not? That's, well, that's, that's what the story of Hollywood is, you know. Yeah. Money talks and nobody walks. But I asked Dennis Miller a few years ago, are you, uh, because you become so conservative, is that costing you work? And he said, he said... In this business, if they can make money off you, you're going to work. Yeah. The thing is, they couldn't make money off of him, so that's why he hasn't had a career. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You can be anything you want to be. And uh, I think, um, well, we were talking about Bruce Willis. He's always been a right winger. Yeah, he's pretty conservative. Yeah, and yet it's never hurt his career. Because you know what it is? It's how easy you are to work with. If you're easy to work with and people like you, in spite of your politics, in spite of anything you might do, they'll go to bat for you. I mean, that's why Harvey Weinstein was left out to dry. You know? Yeah, because, he was a monster. <laughs> because he was a monster and people hated him and nobody could be happier that this guy went down for the count uh, and, and so there was nobody there to catch him when he fell. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and uh, the same like Weiner or Weiner, uh, Anthony Weiner here in New York. Uh, there was nobody there to catch him because nobody liked him. Right. You know, but if, if they liked him, there'd be somebody there to catch him. They'd make some kind of an excuse. They'd let him go away, do his penance and come back. And the other. Yeah, I, I love uh, the Coen Brothers movies. Are, are, I really like them, and I noticed they use a lot of the same character actors in their films. I, I thought they're probably easy to work with. <laughs> well, I mean, I, uh, John Goodman, uh, number one, he's not bad in anything he does. He's, okay. Yeah, he's great in he, anything he does. He can take a picture that absolutely sucks and be the only good thing about it. Okay? Um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he was always known as a reliable performer. You know, if you hired him, you knew he would show up and do the job. Same thing was probably true of, uh, who's the guy's the voice of uh, a lot of stuff? Uh, the black actor. Um, uh, oh, boy. Oh, um, you know. The voice. About. Yeah. I know who you mean. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're all, we're, our brains are fried at our age. The names are the first thing you forget. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, I know this guy's name. I, to I told you about what happened at my doctor's office, didn't I? Or didn't I? Well, we've had so many doctor stories. <laughs> well, I've been having this, this numbness in my feet, so I decided I better go to a neurologist. So the neurologist, as part of his, uh, his uh, workup on me, asked me some questions. And um, he asked me, uh, who's the president of the United States? And I said, Donald Trump. And he said, okay, who's the, uh, who's the governor of New York? You could have heard crickets. <laughs> I went, oh, yeah, I should know this. I, you know, I do a talk show. I just told him I was a talk show host, and I don't know who the governor of New York is. And then he said, okay, who's the mayor of New York? Crickets again. 
somehow when you're pressed for those kind of things, you freeze up at our age. You know, the more mm -hmm. you try to think of the Morgan Freeman is the name I was thinking of. Okay. See, okay. As, as long as I moved away from having to name him, I can name him. All right. Uh, and so when pressed, I was just, I, I, you know, and it's in the medical report. He didn't know who the governor of New York was and who the mayor of New York City was. Wow. Now, there's a good reason. One of the good reasons is, is that I do a talk show, but I do a show for an entire nation, actually the world. And so local politics don't really mean much. So, right. you know, uh, that was my... So that that was my big problem. So I, I I'm embarrassed now, and it's permanently in my record, which will follow me for the rest of my life. You'll you'll never get that out. Yeah, I mean, every doctor I ever see will say, well, "Let me look at my notes." Here. Oh, hmm. didn't know who the governor of New York was. That's a, yeah, yeah. Apparently, though, that didn't uh, that didn't change his opinion of why I have numb feet. So you know, it had nothing to do with it. So. Mm -hmm. And the numbness isn't neuropathy. Everybody went, oh, you've got neuropathy. No, I don't have neuropathy. I have a, he just figured it out and then he went and got an x-ray and saw it. I have a pinched nerve in my, in, uh, in my uh, L5 or L4 or whatever that is. I don't know what those things are. Uh, it, because I have arthritis in the spine and it's pinching a nerve and that's causing the numbness in the feet. And that's uh, pretty common as you get older. I guess. Uh, the only thing is, I went, well, you got some drugs? You know, I'm figuring, now, now at least I'll get something for my trouble, right? Mm -hmm. No, we'll send you to physical therapy. I don't want physical therapy. I want a drug. <laughs> you know? Give me the good stuff, Doc. Make the hurt and go away. <laughs> well, you were talking about actors that are easy to get along with. Uh, you must... Uh, who... <laughs> you heard that's a nightmare well um um who did i hear was a nightmare i don't know there are quite a few i've heard from time to time but i can't name any right now um usually they never became that big they became big for a little while and then they disappeared because nobody wanted to work with them yeah that makes sense so the real bad ones we probably don't even know um, I'm trying to... Uh, you can, well, let's say if you're a super talent, you can be a total a-hole, and they'll work, like, uh, I guess Brando was <laughs> kind of bad. Brando was very difficult, supposedly. Yeah. You know, number one, he didn't memorize his lines. And you're saying, so how did he do them? Well, you saw them, him doing them. They wrote them on, on cue cards. And they had them all over the set. So if you ever notice, you know, Brando's always looking up at the, yeah, up at the sky mm -hmm. when he's talking and down in the ground and everything. That's where the cue cards were. There's a famous picture from The Godfather. Robert Duvall is just covered with cue cards for Brando. Oh, he is? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, uh, I don't understand it myself. You know, why? Well, I'll tell you who's terrible. Well, who who was terrible? My friend Jack Garfine, who was a director in Broadway. Um, uh, oh, who did he say was just terrible? Oh yeah, um, uh, what's her name? Oh God, oh jeez, now my mind. See, I, I'll remember it in a moment. Uh, It'll come back. <laughs> she's dead, uh, and um, she was uh, she was in the Lolita. She played Lolita's mother, Shelley Winters. Oh, okay. He said. Horrible. Hated working with her. Would never work with her again. She was just the worst. You know. So yeah, she always. I remember on talk shows, she just seemed obnoxious. Yeah, Shelley Winters. He hated. Uh, and and had nothing good to say about. It. I said, well, I said to him, who was the worst actress you ever had to work with? And he said, without even breathing. <laughs> Shelley Winters. Yeah. You know, it's you know it's bad when someone gives you the answer just like that. Yeah, when they don't have to say, "Well, let me think about it." 
it's still on their mind. Yeah, let me think about it. Uh, Shelly, maybe Shirley, it, not maybe Shelly Winters, not I think Shelly Winters, definitely just Shelly Winters. That was what came out, Shelly Winters. <laughs> So I, no, I kind of liked him, but I I got the feeling Jerry Lewis is probably not too much fun to work with. Uh, I don't know. You know, sometimes uh, it, 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 he didn't have to work with many people after a while because he worked for himself. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but in working with him, I wonder what it was like being an actor with him. And he used a lot of the same actors over and over again in his pictures. So apparently they were willing to work with him, you know. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, Jerry Lewis had a pretty high opinion of himself, right? Uh, and uh, you know, I uh, there was a, a recently I watched an interview with the last interview he ever did was with Jerry Seinfeld and comedians in cars getting coffee. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. And apparently he held it off from his last run because it was done last year. And uh, he just tells how wonderful Lewis was, you know, really? and, and espouses how great he was. And, and I guess I gained a little appreciation from Jerry's opinion of Jerry Lewis. But I never saw it, okay? I saw it briefly. Early on, Nutty Professor, I think, was mm -hmm. pretty brilliant. You're right. Um, uh, he made me laugh when I would otherwise want to cry. I was in a terrible situation in my life, and I, if ever I was going to commit suicide, it was then. It was when I got this girl pregnant, and then she gave the kid up for adoption, and I was just, I was very depressed. And I walked into a movie theater, and I can't remember what film it was now. People say that if it was at a, uh, in a certain year, it was probably Cinderella, uh, which is not his funniest movie. But I remember watching, just deciding I'll go to the movie, and I watched Jerry Lewis' film, and he made me laugh so much that I forgot my troubles for a little while. And I said, uh, that's what show business is all about. That's what entertaining people is all about. You know, you take them away from something mm -hmm. that they, they really have to deal with. You take them away for a little bit, you make them laugh. And uh, so I appreciated Jerry Lewis on that level, but as the years went on, he was just ghastly. You know? Yeah, yeah. It, it was just it was nothing, you know. Uh, and but the early stuff was great. The early stuff was great. Uh, the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis pictures, I love. You know, I love them as a team. They were brilliant. Who would have thought they the, that, that... They were the Beatles of their time, actually. They, I have a video of them. Uh, they were at the... Uh, what theater were they in New York? They were one of the big theaters. The Paramount Param Theater. Paramount? Yeah. And they're at their window looking down at the crowd. And it looks... If you had then interchanged that crowd with Beatles footage, you wouldn't have right. doubted it for a moment. It was the same kind of insanity. Um... And uh, they were up there mugging for people and so on and so forth. But they, as a, as a, I remember them on the Colgate Comedy Hour because what they would do is they would do sketches and stuff like that. And that was okay. But then they would do their act. They would have an orchestra there and they would be on, like they were on stage doing their act. It was one of the funniest fucking acts I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was this organ grinder and his chimp. It was amazing. <laughs> That's a great description. It was amazing. Uh, and, uh, in fact, when I first started in this business, I called myself Jerry Bennett after Jerry Lewis. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then I realized that was a big mistake. And I went to Houston, and I became James Bond because that was what they wanted me to do. And then when I didn't want to do the James Bond thing anymore... They let me do a talk show, and they said, well, what, what name do you want to use? Then I thought of going back to Jerry Bennett, and then I said, i got to get, be get a better first name. And my father had just died. And in honor of him, I named myself Alex, which was his first name. That's great. And so I came up with a pretty good and original name. I don't think there, 
there are that many other Alex Bennett's in the business. <laughs> and it's certainly better than Jerry Bennett. <laughs> yeah. And looking at my career, if they are named Alex Bennett, they change it. Of course, of course nobody, <laughs> nobody else in, uh, in television or radio can use, or, or movies can use my name. That's right. Uh, because if that's your name, that's your name. Uh, for instance, uh, the reason why uh, uh, Stuart Granger, who was, uh, most people don't even remember the actor Stuart Granger, but he was a contract star at MGM, and he, he really was a big movie actor, did a lot of films. Uh, and um, he did, um, but he couldn't use his real name. He had to change it to Stuart Granger. Because his real name was James Stewart. Wow. Yeah. And you can't, in, in AFTRA or SAG, have the name someone else uses. Right. And you know why they did that. Why? So there, it? Wouldn't be any, any, there wouldn't be any confusion with residual checks. Was that it? Yeah. And then there was, a, uh, there was an actor named uh, John Carson, and he had to go by John David Carson because, yeah, you, you can't have the two same names together. Right. He had a career that lasted about two years, but it was John. It, it John I remember John David Carson. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Tony Curtis uh, uh, had to change his name. Originally, it was Mae West. So, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, You're on fire today. <laughs> I'm on fire today, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember Morgan Freeman. But the know. neurons are all clicking. The, You're doing well. <laughs> the neurons are clicking, but they're not firing. That's the problem. <laughs> so embarrassing not being able to name Mario Cuomo. Oh, by the way, do you know who the mayor of New York City is? Uh, well, it was Bloomberg, and now it's... Well, that uh, I could have oh, named. It's, uh, it's the uh, de Blasio. See, you're good. See? You still got all your marbles. I've lost like. mine. <laughs> I have no idea what this doctor was saying. So I go to my first uh, uh, physical therapy on, on Thursday. I'm going back to my old physical therapist that did my knee and we'll see if he can make my back better you know i have no pain back there it's just the numb feet and it drives me crazy because when i lie down especially they start to hurt you know so. and i'm sitting and that does it too so uh, and you're still and you're still doing the bicycle father dear you're growing old yeah right after i we're finished here i'm going to get uh yeah, i'm in my uh my workout outfit already which is just shorts and you know shoes and i'm going down to the place and i'll do another 20 minutes i always say i'm going to do 20 minutes i wind up doing 25 you know but that's a good that's workout. A, that's a what that's a good workout is it is it a good workout yeah what would be considered an okay workout? 20 minutes would be an okay. Anything above that's uh, very good. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I set myself up for 20 minutes, and then if I go longer, fine, you know. I just find it, I just find that doing that sort of thing is a waste of your life, you know, because you're not going anywhere. You're not seeing anything. I bring along my iPhone so I can watch Netflix while I'm doing it, you know. So. Well, it is, uh, and it's also uh, working out. It's just incredibly boring. It is very boring. Now, at least when you run, you're seeing stuff, you know. You see stuff, yes. You get in confrontations with people, so sometimes you can liven it up that way. But what, what do you mean confrontations with people? Oh, uh, I guess, you know, bicycles. In this city, there's bicycles that run people over, so you're always fighting them. And uh, when I uh, when I run, I, I have some bread in my pockets because I like to throw bread to birds, and apparently that makes some people crazy. And I almost got into fights with people over that. Oh, for b bread for birds? Yeah, I'm dry, I'm running through Fort Mason. And I throw some bread out, and this park ranger goes, "Hey, don't feed the birds." And I said, "Don't feed your children." <laughs> oh boy! He practically well, lost his mind. I thought he was going to well, come after. Quickly, me. I'll tell you a quick story. We were doing a TV show. You know, one of my Alex Bennett specials for Channel Forty Four, and we were doing these things outside. And we found that if we took bread uh, uh, and, and put it on ourselves, 
pigeons would just come flocking to us. Mm -hmm. And you could put it, I could put bread on top of my head and a pigeon would stand on my head to get it. So we knew where we could, we could, we literally, I had a pigeon wrangler who wrangled the pigeons, right? <laughs> wrangler. Well, there's a guy next to me who obviously went to the park every day, went to the you know, Palace of Fine Arts uh, every day and fed the pigeons and none of the pigeons were coming to him they were all coming to us and he was pissed off at us because we were feeding his fucking pigeons people who, <laughs> you know that's a kind of insanity you run into with people and yeah they're jealous pigeon wranglers yeah, jealous so they don't like you throwing uh, uh, uh Bread, I guess, because it encourages the pigeons. Is that it? Well, I, I actually don't. I feel it's usually crows because I like crows because they're really smart. But I don't know. They, <laughs> they think it's not natural. We'll have to get it. into that the next time we talk because we've run out of time, and I want to know why yeah. crows are intelligent. So people can stay <laughs> oh, tuned. they are. Yeah. They, people can stay tuned to this program next week and find out why crows are intelligent. From Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Birdman of Alcatraz, yes. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much, Larry. We love Larry Brown. Who doesn't love Larry Brown? Come on, anybody? You don't love Larry Brown? I don't know anybody in this whole wide world that dislikes Larry Brown. I know people that hate me, but that's that's that goes with the territory. But he, everybody loves Larry, uh, and I uh, I keep saying that. And then there there uh, uh, everybody loves Raymond too. I guess I don't know. Anyway, let me open up the uh, Skype lines here. Had uh, we had quite a weekend worth of news and things like that. A lot of things going on. So the question is, uh, are, are people going to call to want to talk about it? Uh, what do I want what, what is it that we have to talk about? Well, <laughs> well, you know, him, among other things. Okay. Anyway, uh, our, uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of us uh, using uh, Skype, very few of you do. We have regulars, and then that's it. And I'd like some new people to call, too. And the way you learn how to do that is you go over to gabnet.net. That's G-A-B-N-E-T dot net. And over there, not only will you see the program running, so you don't have to miss a moment of it if you're watching it on video. You can also hear it in the audio there if you want to. But also on the right-hand side of the, uh, of the page is a, a tutorial on how to call us using Skype and how to call the program using Skype, and we would love to have you call. Uh, it would just be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, did I do anything this weekend? No. A girlfriend was out of town, and so that left me alone to my own devices. I had the bedroom all to myself, and uh, I had a really nice time. Oh, look, 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 I got, I got to tell you, you can't, you can't see it, folks. But uh, let me let me just uh, go to a picture of Scott Boddicker. Scott, turn your picture off so we can see the picture that you have there. No! Huh? <laughs> Isn't it, 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 wait a minute. Oh, wait. He hung up on us. That's not supposed to That's not what I wanted you to do, Scott. <laughs> that's not what I wanted you to do, Scott. Uh, uh, let me see. Add the group. Hey, hey, wait a minute. There we go. Now, see? What is that? That's that's the uh, that's the daughter, and yeah, her, and I hit the her, wrong button. I'm sorry, I hit the off button. Yeah, and her uh, her bridesmaids, I guess. Yes, my other daughters. Yeah, uh, uh, very nice, very nice, and a very attractive daughter. I assume your daughter is the one in the middle. The the one in the white. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one in the, the white. Well, the other two are in blue. You can't see the 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 the, the one on the right. Yeah. Or left. Looks like everybody just it looks like it was really nice. It was. It was very nice. It made you feel real old, right? Very old. <laughs> so anyway, so now 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 it's on to children and things like that and being a grandpa, hopefully. And hopefully. Are you looking forward to the grandpa thing? Of course I am. I, I imagine Jeff Stein is a grandpa, right, Jeff? 
I have four granddaughters. Four granddaughters. Okay. And, and Phil, do you have any grandchildren? No, you're, uh, you don't have your microphone on. That's for damn right. sure. <laughs> Phil. Uh, or just one one moment. What? <laughs> oh oh oh! It's the new it's the new uh, uh, audio board that he bought, and ah. he, and and this is how well it works. Yes, Phil, are you going to be able to get audio to us? Hey, this is going to be a better show than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! You know why don't you just uh, pull out that one and put back in the old one? <laughs> Look at him. He's a regular Marcel Marcel. <laughs> uh, Gee, and I was I was looking forward to talking to you tonight. Uh, but now we can say all we've got to say, and you can be frustrated there not having a microphone. So you didn't, ch before you did this, you didn't check to make sure the microphone works? You made sure it worked. Yeah, good job. Did you make sure that it worked through <laughs> Skype? Did you Hi. did you notice a uh, uh, the the uh, the audio going back and forth on Skype? Really? Are you sure of that? <laughs> you want you you're gonna you're gonna hang up or what are you gonna do here? You're gonna <laughs> hang up and then you're gonna come back and try again, right? What? Scary. Oh, you're going to call me on the phone? You're going to use the cell phone. You're going to use the cell phone? He goes out, he buys a $1,200 board, and the fucking thing doesn't work. Yes. How about that, huh? Uh, <laughs> boy. Anyway. How was your weekend, Je Jeff? Good. Good. I'm, I'm, like, back at home. Yeah. That's nice, and uh, and getting ready to uh, go to Italy. A what? Taking the family. That's right, and taking all the grandkids to Italy. Really? Yeah. That's nice. Are you gonna Are you gonna call us from there? Sure. Yeah, you got to. Sure. I uh, yeah, I had too many friends and. Uh, and actually, my my uh, brother-in-law's who died. Yeah. In the last couple of years, and I said, "This is crazy. We don't want to go to another funeral. We'd rather go on a vacation." Good for you. You yep. know. What the hell? So is this setting you back a bit? Oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> it's only it's, money. Hey. May as well use it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish. You I, know, see, what I am I going to do? Spend it on Gabnet? Well, you see, I, I don't understand. See, I, I have a limited amount of money, but it's enough. Uh, if I die tomorrow, uh, no, it's enough. But if I knew how long I was going to live, then I would spend it accordingly. You know, why leave money behind? I don't have any kids. We don't have anybody to leave the money to. You know. Um, you leave it to you, Scott? Sure, yeah, I'll why take not? It. I'll take it. Why not? I'll Girlfriend it. thinks she's going to go before me. You know. Uh, well, she may go, but she may not die. She may just go. She, she may just go. <laughs> <laughs> she may just leave me. Yeah. And you're still here. <laughs> she said oh, that the other day on the air, I said about chiropractors that if he doesn't fix you in one visit, why, why go to him? Did I say that? I didn't hear that. I don't remember yeah, saying something it. Something like that. Really? Yeah. Oh, because I don't expect any doctor to fix me on the first visit. You know, they have to make a living, <laughs> right? Well, I think what you said is something like, it, what they'll do is they'll adjust you, but you got to come back in two weeks for the same adjust, adjustment over and over and over, too. Yeah. Now, you said something like that also. So I'm, I'm going to, for this thing, the feet, the numb feet, which are just this week, they've been giving me a terrible time. It hurts when I walk and all of that. Uh, it, 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 and my doctor found a, that my I had arthritis in my spine and it's pinching a nerve. And that's what's doing it. So I have to go to physical therapy. So I imagine a physical therapist would be the guy to go to, right? Rather than a, a chiropractor? Yes. I think they're much better. 
really a physical therapist yeah yeah, yeah. and plus uh, her 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 <laughs> chiropractor doesn't take insurance you know he bills the insurance company for you but you have to pay him and i'm going my guy i the insurance takes care of him so you know i just don't know what i should do so anyway, we've lost Phil because he, Phil decided he was going to put in his new $1,200 control board when he could have bought one for 89 bucks. It would be working right now, you know. Uh, he, he has no idea. Well, I, I think it's hilarious myself, but, you know. He's sending me his old board. I know that one works, you know. <coughs> But I'm not. I can't install it in here because I don't have the room. Uh, I need a small footprint. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, um, uh, I I don't want to start talking about Trump until he's here. <laughs> but then again, we could talk about Trump now, get it out of our system, and by the time he gets the audio up and running, we can say to him, "Well, we're tired of talking about that already." Yeah, yeah, that's good. Let's yeah. talk about something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see here. Is there anything else we can talk about? You know what? Did anybody get a chance? Any of you have Showtime? No. Uh, yeah, I, but I don't watch it too much. Uh, uh, well, uh, there's the new Sasha Baron Cohen show. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's something, something America. Uh, and... Um, it was so funny that mm. my wife was pissing her pants. <laughs> That's how funny it was. That's uh, damn funny. There have been, the reviews on it have been mixed. Some people hate it, and some people absolutely love it. I thought it was terrific. But the last piece he does in the show, he p plays these different characters, like he used to do Borat and stuff. Well, now these are different characters, because if he shows up as Borat, people immediately know they're, He's up to no good, so he shows up as other people now. And one of them is an Israeli commando who wants to come to the United States and push the idea that, you know, we shouldn't arm teachers. We should arm the students. And that we think all kids over three-year-olds should be able to carry firearms. <laughs> that is funny. And he gets people to agree with him. He gets people gun advocates to agree with him and he then gets people like Trent Lott to do a commercial for uh, arming kids. Yes. I'm not, is this thing working? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm, I'm using the uh, cameras. Uh, That's what it sounded like. Yeah. You know how much that camera cost you? Yeah, $99. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> this, this was working yesterday on a Skype test call. I just did another one, and it's not working. So I must have messed up something. Yeah, uh, you messed it's, you it's, messed up uh, your whole system by buying a $1,200 piece of well, board. Well, I, I, I bought it on uh, eBay um, used. Oh, really? It's 600 It's 600 but, uh, used. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, and, and it was working yesterday. Uh, you know, I did the Skype test call. It worked. It worked just fine. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Maybe I need these things. Probably. So yeah. You can hear yourself. Right. Yeah. Are you, Are you sure you've got? It? Well, you. I guess you. You know. I. If I were there, I maybe could help you do it. Yeah. Well. Uh, I. I. I watched about thirty YouTube videos on this thing, setting it up, and uh, it was working. So I must have touched something. But, yes, uh, you've touched your wallet. Um, yeah. yeah. So I know I you get the Russian version or did you get the American yeah. version? Yeah, the uh, the apologist version. The apologist <laughs> version. <laughs> oh boy, uh, where do we begin? Oh God, I don't know where to begin with this. Uh, how about? There are some people, and I tend to agree with them, saying that what Trump did this weekend was a traitorous act. No. What Trump did was smart. 
Oh, no, <laughs> Phil, 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 you're flying in the face of every Republican alive right now who'd like to murder the guy. Well, I think they're just looking to preserve their uh, uh, their seats. Their position. Oh, don't t- yeah. don't tell yes. me. Don't tell me the throwing throwing your own people away and that, siding uh, with that murderous thug. Well, was, this is the deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, this it, is what deal, it, Phil? Come on, it, I want to hear this. If you negotiate a deal, do you worry about what's happened in the past if you want uh, to do a deal in the future. This isn't, then. hey, Phil, this isn't The Apprentice, okay? You know, oh, I mean, the, the hey. deal here is a, sometimes a matter of life and death, okay? He, yeah. he Putin came Nuclear out. Nuclear disarmament, uh, uh, North Korea, How, China, yeah, have we, Syria. Do we, do, we have, do we have nuclear disarmament with North Korea? We're talking about nuclear disarmament with, the, the, uh, with uh, Russia. No, we're not. And, no, we're not. That oh, was yeah, never. That, that was, was, one that of was the No, that was never on the table. Where did you hear that? He said that between the two of them, they have ninety percent of the nuclear. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He said, he said that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But and, he didn't uh, say that he was and, going to do and, anything and about stopping the it. Stark Treaty is going to, uh, according to Putin and him, uh, <laughs> that they're going to renew the Stark Treaty. They're going to limit their nuclear capacity. And I think that that's a very positive thing. Where did so, you, where'd you, you hear this bullshit? I watched it right. I it came right I, out. I of was Putin's watching mouth. it. I was watching it. <laughs> no, it came out of Putin's mouth. Right. Well, you know. You know. He, 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 you're in a room there with two of the biggest liars in the world. Okay. And you're thing. telling me which one I should believe? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't believe uh, Stroke or that guy. Believe, from, uh, it or, believe yeah, me yeah. when I He's say okay. Putin did not Come walk on. out of that room giving up anything and getting a lot. Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, you've got to start talking first. What and, do you mean we'll uh, see? Today, today Trump tried to, to back off of his statements yesterday. He tried to walk well, him back. He was trying to help uh, well, other Republicans <laughs> that... Uh, we're getting backlash because the media was uh, beating them up and not seeing really? the importance really? of what you heard then, then what was happening with these guys yesterday when they were beating up the president? These were they Republicans. Were. Republic Fox. Fox yeah. was beating yeah. up on them. My mother said Fox. Yeah, I think they're just looking for their own survival. Shit. Huh? It's, they're going for their own survival. Wait a minute. What, what kind of survival is Fox going for? Well, right now, just to beat MSNBC, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Republicans Phil, don't want to Phil, lose Phil, Phil, seats. Phil, you sound like an idiot. You, you really sound like an idiot. <laughs> Can I tell you? you? You know, come on. Maybe I should work on my board. You, your president is a traitor. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that oh, yes, he is. put the greater he good greater in front of... Uh, as something that what happened was in the, the greater good in this particular case? The greater good is everything else that they had to negotiate. Well, no, the greater good hours. was to keep the pee pee photos from showing yeah. up. Yeah, you must have some on now. You're right. right. Matter of fact, Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace asked Putin if he had anything on Trump, and Putin said no. All uh-huh, right, and you no, believe no. Putin? Thanks yeah. for answering that. Now you, I know. You, what it's amazing. Is. It's amazing. How, it must how, be true if he said it. How, how, they, how, how, how you guys will believe one of the world's greatest thugs and murderers, and yet you will allow our president to throw uh, our allies to the wolves. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, well, I'm actually enjoying it, really. It's all burning. Good. Good. Yeah, I, I don't think he threw the allies to the wolves. Uh, I think what he's doing is he's dealing with the biggest wolf there is, and uh, you know, and and uh, little Bo Peep is uh, just going to have to pay why, the bill. Why don't we just admit it? This so-called called guy who knows uh, wrote a book called The Art of the Deal doesn't know how to make a deal. Uh, we'll see. You know we'll see. Wait, 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 we'll see. How long do I have to wait until the bombs are dropping from the skies? I think that the uh, that they're getting along with uh, with Russia is a good thing, and. Uh, and I think do you that, really uh, think we're getting along with Russia, or do you think Putin has put one over on Trump? A lot better than uh, they dealt with Obama, 
And uh, no, Obama you know, stood up to them. No, Obama acquiesced. Obama just didn't want anything to to to, to happen. How did under he acquiesce? Name a, a situation oh, in which he acquiesced to the Russians. Uh, Syria, the red line in the sand. No, I t said the Russians. Oh, the red oh. line, the, the, uh, the Russians, you, you, you know. Okay, and, and that enabled the Russians to, to walk into Syria. And, uh, oh, I see. Then okay, there, okay. There, so, there, so Syria is, is, is uh, Obama's fault. Yes. Oh, okay. Boy, do you. Whew. Wow. And so is ISIS. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Uh, anybody else you want to blame on him? Alex Bennett. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, look, Alex, I was watching Anderson Cooper before. He had the guy on from all the president's men, that writer. What's his name? Bern Bernstein. Yes. And Bernstein said, I've never seen a president. He's worse than Nixon, he said. He says he cannot. It's like he's just, he thinks he could be impeached because the Republicans are drop, drop, uh, want him out for what he said. Can they impeach him on that? Yes. I don't, I can he's a traitor. They well, if they can say it's a traitorous act, uh, you know, his job as president is to protect and 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 uh, the uphold. United, and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, and he's supposed to also protect the nation. And when he does something that puts it in jeopardy, he is going against uh, his uh, stated vow of uh, of what he would oath. do, uh, stated oath. And uh, there's a good shot that uh, in that particular case, he was a traitor because he was throwing up the United States in favor of a foreign government. Oh, that's what he said, yeah. And, I mean, and there are, and there are like Republicans. Own. There are Republicans who have said it was traitorous. Yeah. This is we'll see. Good. Anyway, well, still, it's not good for what he said. Yeah. Then he had to come back, back and, and uh, nothing's going to happen of it. You know, uh, he, oh, I, I, I think that, that it's his own fault, Trump. He got to keep talking. You know what? It looks like that Putin has something on him. No, it's no. It's so obvious. He, he, Putin has something on you. <laughs> I wish he did. I got nothing. He, he got it. You know, soon I'm going to get paid in ruples. That's what I thought. Of. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, but Phil, you're not a little worried about that, that whole thing? No. Not at all. Not at all. Oh, my God, I can't believe this guy. I figured he'd be a little worried. I can't remember what Republican it was who said that, uh, that, that uh, um, oh, uh, what's his name, Trump, uh, should check that soccer ball for microphones. Oh, yeah. That was who, which one? Who, who was that? I, I, didn't hear that? I heard that, too, but I don't know who it said it. It wasn't Mitch McConnell. It was somebody like Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how quick they are to cut and run, these guys? They're just fair weather supporters. When Trump was uh, doing really well and everything was uh, falling in behind him, uh, these, he guys, these guys and, couldn't and wait. And when, when exactly was that, Phil? Oh, the last uh, year and a half. Really? Yeah. Everything's been going smoothly? I think so. The other day, he bragged that the Dow went over 25,000. Yeah. Yeah. And the the funny part about it was it had before it went so, down. Well, <laughs> you know. What goes down must come up. You know, what goes up must go down. Uh, it was a Galileo. Yeah. It just looks crazy that you're watching this guy. And you don't know what he's going to do next. He was uh, one of the guys working on making the deal. Yeah. Is he just stupid? Like, well, you know, I, I, think, I think that he just doesn't know what the hell's going on yet. Nah, you know, he knows what's going on, and I think he was dealing with the greater good. No, he was dealing with a greater mind. He was dealing yeah, with a great. He was, he was be, dealing with a, with a greater uh, a greater leader. He was dealing with a greater Machiavellian individual. Uh, he was dealing with the kind, you know, maybe he, the, the best deals he had to make was with the mob in New York City. But believe me, Putin is the ultimate mobster. Well, uh, Putin's a pretty smart guy. And, uh, you know, we'll see what comes out of this. I think if Putin is He's smart, he, he, like knows, he knows making a friend of Trump is going to be better than making an enemy. No, he's going to know that flattering Trump 
flattering Trump <laughs> yeah, get yeah, you yeah. anything you yeah. want. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's, he's, I don't he's, think he flattered him. Well, you know, when they first sat down, he hardly looked at Trump. That was a photo op. Yeah. That was a photo op. What happened in the meetings? You know what they want now? They well, want the translator to testify before Congress as to what went on in that room. Oh, there was a closed room, just him and him, right? Yeah. No, there was two translators. There were two translators. And I think and, that oh, Congress I'm, is Jew. Can they get that out? Yeah, they can get that information <clears throat> because I guess uh, all of those things need to be, are they need to be public knowledge? <laughs> Well, I mean, they can uh, they can get the uh, translator and get get her to say what was said in that room. No, oh, be interesting. Maybe they had to speak uh, a system where it actually could listen to those. Oh, things. I'm I'm sure that there's a recording of it. I'm sure Putin yeah. made one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he probably got the gold tape. Everything. He's mm -hmm. probably ready to go viral any second, just in case he doesn't do something for him. Right. Right. Oh, right. So our leader is Putin right now. That's I wish I knew saying. why this thing wasn't working. I'm starting to enjoy it. <laughs> oh, now we're going to have to deal all night with his god. Worry about it after the show, Phil. What is he telling me? Yeah. Phil, so you can always move to Russia. Property yeah. sheet. <laughs> it might work there. Uh, I wonder if property is cheap in Russia. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Putin will probably take it from you, though, if he doesn't like it. Yeah, that's that's one of the problems. Well, listen, let's get, some, let's get some more callers in here, because I want to hear what other people have to say, too. I want to hear what, what the general... Well, of course, you know my, our audience, for the most part, is going to say that you're full of shit. And, of course. And even somebody like Patrick would call up and say, in this case, you're full of shit. Well, I think that uh, the, the, uh, the judge is still out. On uh, really? on uh, what uh, what the effects of this are? And which judge and is that? Judge Judy? <laughs> no, uh, I I I think that what he did was for the greater good. The and, greater uh, good it, of who? And, and and he said he said in that conference that uh, he had intelligence that said that uh, the Russians uh, did the uh, meddled in our election. And Putin said, okay, if you want to interview these 12 people, you can send your people over. We'll let you interview them. You can depose them. And uh, I don't... Uh, Do you don't think, think that that's a wise idea, Phil? Well, they're not going to put the, our, 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 uh, our investigators in jail. Uh, yeah, I think, think it's a wise idea. Do you think, oh, you think it's a wise idea to allow them to interrogate are no. people no no, no See, that's what no, no that's what he wants to do no he offered to allow no, our interrogators no 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 no, no no you got it all wrong he wants them to come over and for them to ask him questions but he wants to get stuff out of them and find out what they he, he wants them he wants them to present their evidence yep. well he he got their evidence am i right Chris am Wallace. i right scott yep. No, Chris Wallace Wait a handed the indictment. No, that to I know, Putin. I know he did, and, and Putin didn't even pick it up. Okay, but no, the, he just said put it on the table. No, but no, here's the point. Sure, Trump Scott Trump heard Trump exactly Trump. what I heard. That what Putin wanted was the ability to debrief these people from the FBI and the Justice Department and so on, women, and and see what they've got. Have them present their evidence to them. And that's, well, it, am I right, Scott? Yeah. Did I hear it yeah, wrong? Well, what, what Putin wanted was, Putin wants to interview some some billionaire guy who made a lot of money over in Russia and took all the money out of Russia. He wants to get the money back for Russian taxes because <clears throat> I guess Putin didn't get his cut. So he wants I to never go heard that. to the U.S. and get some guy. And if, if we're going to be able to go over to Russia and interview their guys... He wants to come over here and interview this this billionaire that that stole money from him. That's not it. All right, Let, let's see if I can find any. Oh, son of a bitch! What you know something, Phil? If I'm having a bad uh, electronics night. Yeah. Uh, Just like Trump had over the weekend. Trump's got a lot. You're not yes. going to fix it, He's Phil. I listened to the transcript. I said, wouldn't. 
I didn't mean wood. I, I, I wanted to uh, to get uh, information on uh, what Putin had offered, uh, and I, I didn't hear it that way. And I think that you guys hear it through democratic ears. No, you know, we heard we heard, uh, we heard it through what was said uh, yesterday. Well, I heard what was said yesterday, and and Putin said that he would. Uh, uh, but you you know you seem to put so much credibility in what Putin says. Well, because he's, he's a traitor too. He's the guy we got to deal with. No, he's the guy we got to stop from doing his evil deeds towards our he country. He said that these actors were doing it on their own and without the authorization Full fucking of- shit do you think anything goes on in this, in 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 uh, Russia any longer without Putin having his finger on the pulse of it I'm sure oh, there's no I'm way sh- you oh, can run a government oh right of course and, and have your finger on and micromanage every every person uh, there yeah right yeah right i you know i can't micromanage uh, six employees, let alone uh, 60 million, or uh, how many they have there. Believe me, if tomorrow he said, stop uh, uh, hacking the United States, all of a sudden it would stop. Well, he did say that, didn't he? No, he didn't. He said, we won't interfere with your elections. Well, right, okay. I don't think he said exactly that. Uh, there was some way he phrased it that gave him more latitude to do other stuff. Ah. Yeah, he didn't say he was going to stop. He, he, what was the term he used? I'm trying to remember. I can't. I, I'm having a bad time recalling exactly the wording. But, you know, it's the same as Trump today trying to walk back one certain one word, one word, which was wouldn't versus would. He suddenly found one place yeah. where he could say, well, I really meant something else and change the whole dialogue. And it's, it was so full of shit. It was like the dog ate my did, homework as an excuse. It did sound a little full of shit to me. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 The wood, the wood oh, wooden oh, thing. Oh, a false, sounded full folks, of shit. I want to say. I didn't think he, I didn't think he I, had to apologize I, I, for anything. I want to say, folks, thank you so much for having enjoyed GabNet. We're going to close down no, the entire no. network now <laughs> because there's no reason to keep doing it because Phil finally agreed that Trump may have been full of shit. No, I said that he didn't need to walk back his statement. Uh, I agreed with it. You you agreed with the tr- the uh, original one. Yeah, the traitor tr- statement. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know what he said was Trump. I mean uh, Trump. Uh, Putin said that he yeah. didn't do it. He said he was he sternly answered me and he said he didn't do it. He said he didn't expect a Perry Mason moment when he presented uh, the accusation. Yeah, and that's like the time Bush said he looked into Putin's eyes and saw his soul and knew he was telling the truth. Do you remember that one? Yes. <laughs> well, no, he hey, said hey, he was <laughs> hey, Bree, how are you? Bree? How are you, Alex? Okay, where are you right now? Uh, I'm still in the Philippines at still, the moment. I'm still in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Uh, Bree, yeah. the other day yeah. you asked me where she grew up in Makati. Makate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and the street. Yeah, I found figured that. Yeah, and the street I'll be is evangelist. There, uh, tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Makati. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can go to Makati anytime, Phil. Makati is higher end than where you live right now. Really? Makati is sort of the, the uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think back from my days in the States, the Beverly Hills of Manila. Oh. oh interesting. Wow. wow. And yeah. she grew up on some yeah. street in Evangelista. I don't know what that, where that is. But it's in Makati. Yeah, well, this is, this, is, uh, this is something that means a lot to almost everybody who's listening to us right now. Well, Bree asked me where she grew up, and I said, you know, okay, uh, so you no. told them. Now you don't have to give us the rest of the topographical information of of, of the well, You know, this was a previous show, and it, you know. Well, that's yeah, all the more that. reason not to bring it up. For flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of you're not breaking up on us. You're kind of like you, you got a weird bandwidth there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's something going on with my with this internet, and I'm using uh, 
Oh, there. Uh, Alcatel tablet. Yeah, that's better. It's not so yeah, grand. That, that's slightly better. That's better, actually. You're sounding better now. Do we get okay. a Do we get a picture on you at all? No, that I think that would peter it out. Oh, really? Uh, oh, so no, oh, okay. Really? All right. Well, yeah, I'm. It's not because of the internet. It's the device I'm using. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alcatel. Who is Alcatel? Alcatel? I know the name. Yeah. Yeah, I, I forget. I, I, I read about it at some point. Uh, it's yeah. just a kind of a tablet, you know. Yeah. So have you? Uh, did you hit watch any of our president with Putin at all, Bree? No, I got to tell you, I'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to news. I'm on vacation, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, but what if you come back and the entire world has been blown to smithereens? <laughs> Well, I mean, what we're dealing with here is uh, a lot of rains and some, you know, and uh, some flooding in some areas. Uh, that, that's, you know, I, so, I mean, I, I, I read about it, but, you know, I, it's hard to follow Trump. You never know what is real and what is happening. I mean, one day he says Russia is our greatest ally and friend, you know, and European Union is terrible and they're our enemy. And then the next day he'll say, oh, but I didn't mean that. I meant it in this way. Uh, you mistook me. And so you can't really, it's so hard, it's so amorphous. How can you well, follow him? Somebody, you know, somebody, somebody today put it that on Monday he said something. On Tuesday he walked it back. There's always a good chance on Wednesday he's going to go back to his original statement. You know, that there, there's right. no consistency with this guy in his lying as it were. Yes, Je uh, Jeff. Is it true that the president is the guy who's able to pull the bus? Oh, 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 there we go. There we, we, we have a picture and everything now. Yeah. What were you going to now? Sorry. Oh, what were you so, gonna, I'm sorry. The president is the guy who pulls the button, right? Pushes the, the button. Nuclear. Yeah, yeah, figuratively. Yeah. Now, what happens if he's the guy who makes a lot of mistakes? He changes his mind. On well, uh, you know, uh, my question really is, what is going to happen if he does try to push the button? Uh, I, I, I'll tell you something. We're getting a lot of noise out of you. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm trying to give you the picture i shouldn't have i guess yeah well yeah uh, it's nice to see it but you know uh, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 he has his finger on the button yes he has his finger on the button but he doesn't literally have his finger on the button it's not sitting there and he pushes it and all of a sudden the world blows up you know it's a it's it's it literally a a button that he put it's not a button he pushes so much as uh a, uh, a, a command he gives, and then other people follow up on that command. And my question is, is that if the day comes uh, when, when, when he makes that command, if he does, because I, I, I'm frightened just like you are that this ability is in his hands, what's going to happen? Are the people who have to follow through with that order going to actually do it? You know, and uh, I don't know if they will or not. You know, I hope they don't. But, uh, in fact, a lot of people are trying to figure out a way to get that power away from him. Because they see him as such a loose cannon. So, That's it. you know. Hello, Jack Bishop. Thought I'd drop by just for a minute and tell Phil Meyer that uh, the problem he's having is his uh, uh, Skype is set to the internal microphone in his camera. There's another setting that he needs to be on. Yeah, no, he knows that. He, oh. he went to that setting so he could talk to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, right now it's set to the uh, webcam. Uh, but when I uh, try to pick something else from the drop-down menu, the Firewire... Uh, Thing is not there now. It was yesterday. Uh -huh. And um, well, I'll go back to sleep then. I didn't <laughs> anything else anyway. Wait yeah, a minute. Wait so. a minute. Hold on a second. You got to know that you're in pretty bad trouble there, Phil. 
when you're getting technical information from Jack Bishop. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. And you're in bad and you're in bad trouble when I agree with you about something. What, you agree with me about Trump? No, I don't agree with you about Trump, but I think you pay your money, you pick your side. Yeah. Be true to your be, just like high school, be true to your team. Yeah, but you know, I mean I'm not a fair weather Republican. You're not a fair weather Republican? Yeah. But you're a fair yeah. weather Trump follower. No, no, I, 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 I like Trump, and uh, I, I think he did the right thing, but uh, you, you're never going to agree with that. Because well, you think that, uh, you know, people like Peter uh, Strzok uh, aren't uh, trying to uh, undermine the election. Well, did you ever agree with Obama? Did you ever agree with Clinton? Uh, yeah, you know, Clinton was good for the economy. Uh, but yeah. you never agreed with anything that Obama did. Uh, Honestly, I think you? that he did that much. What did he do? Uh, you know, he he tried to he tried to fuck up the health care system. Well, you uh, see, I disagree with you on that. But hey, let's fight about it one night on the intersection. Yeah, well, I got to get my microphone going before this is not comfortable. You're you're invited to fight with me any night of the week. Thank you very much. Although tomorrow is Faye's birthday, and even oh. though uh, I have a, a camera thing to do, so I won't be here tomorrow. But uh, so I got to deal with her birthday, and well, then we'll just make sure we don't go on tomorrow night because there's no reason to. Well, yeah. thank you. I, I, can use, I can use the night off anyway. I got to do laundry and wash my hair. Hey, you That's know that right. was very Trump of you. <laughs> very Trump of me. Yeah, no, I yeah. Well, in uh, in September, I'm taking a week off. Oh, please yeah. don't tell me that. <laughs> Am I going to have to fill in for you for a if, whole week? If you want to, if you don't want to, there'll just be two dead hours here. Oh, we can't have that. Three. Yeah. Oh, two, two. Yeah, right. We cannot have that. Yeah. It's so like, that's what I don't, us, I don't want us ever to take another four day vacation. Because yeah. you know, I'm, 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 to I'm retrained. I'm just going to start taking vacations finally. I think yeah. it's a good idea. Well, well, you know what I would suggest? Maybe we could have guest host night with we some could. of our gab netters. Yeah, they've done that before. Didn't work out so well. What? No, we never did that. <clears throat> Well, you, you had that you know, thing with... Uh, I, I could see Phil doing a show. He nah, you know, there was a guy uh, that uh, used to talk, uh, used to call the show when he knew a lot about uh, uh, the Constitution. And didn't he do some sort of thing? And it didn't, it didn't work out what, that Just well. one night. Yeah. It was one night too long. <laughs> yeah. And then when he said, how was it? I felt I had to give an honest answer, and that was the last I heard from him. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. yeah, you just said it wasn't what you expected. Well, it wasn't what but, he sold me he was going to do. Yeah. Well, you know who could do? Amy? No, please. Uh, you know who could do a show? Yeah. Renee Collins. That might be interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, you've been in broadcasting a long time, right? Yeah, more years than I cared. And, and you know it ain't that easy. No, it's not that yeah, easy. And I, I think Renee is great as a guest, and she can certainly hold her own as, in a discussion, but to actually run a show is a different thing altogether. You you probably have a point, and the, and the only other guy that I have read is <clears throat> Rob Alfano. Well, Rob, yeah. Rob doesn't have belief in himself as a talk show host. But he could do it for four days. No, no, but what I'm saying is is that that I think Rob is one of the best talents I've worked with. And yeah. when he did a show here, it was terrific. Right. But he didn't think it was. You know, he did not have faith. He, he had more faith in himself as a disc jockey than he did mm -hmm. as a talk show host. And well, I tried to convince him that he was very good, but he wouldn't, you know, he just it wouldn't believe it, you know. I know a guy in Atlanta that's the same way who could do what we do, but he says, I'm just a disc jockey. Right. And I, you read the newspaper, you got an opinion, you're a talk show host. You talk about this kind of stuff over coffee at the coffee shop. 
I said, well, yeah, but that's not the same. You got to know what you're talking about. I said, oh, hell, if, if you had to know that. I know. Lim Limbaugh, <laughs> Hannity, me, Alex, we wouldn't have gigs. Said, well, you know, said, I'll tell you what. I, I'm, we're making this shit up as we go. I'm not a very good disc jockey. So, what do you want to do? I've got it on you. I you were. Huh? But I've got it on you. I only Wait, did that. Food? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What, what, oh, what Bree is say? talking to somebody in the background. Oh, he's t Bree, Bree says he's Stop on him. mute. You're not on mute, Bree. <laughs> okay, I'm on. Now I am. Right? No, no. Well, no. You're not on now either. Now you <laughs> uh, Say hello, Bree. Hello, Bree. Okay, now you're on mute. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. And uh, don't be like Mike and stay on Mike. On no, mute. I mean, I, uh, you know, I was never very good disc jockey. You know? I thought you were. You were fine. I, I listened to uh, some tapes of me, and, and I was at a point where I cared about being a disc jockey. Yeah. I was okay I, at it, you know. I have a tape for me from 1963, and I would not hire me. Yeah. But. Over the years, I got pretty good. Well, I, I was, you used to yeah. you used to say, Alex, that you didn't want to play anything that was new because you wanted to let the jocks do that, and you would pick music that uh, wasn't the newest stuff, that wasn't the hot stuff. I don't so remember that, saying that, but I mean, but Camel, yeah, because I was picking the music, I was pulling the music off that chart. You know, every, it had a color coded chart. And uh, so I could pull in, albums. In those, in those days when I was working on music stations, essentially doing a talk show, I yeah. had to fight every single day to not play records. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like I often described that they would do with me what they would, what people would do with me when they found out a Jew was coming for dinner to try and <laughs> see if they could make me eat pork. You know, yeah. well, it was also let's see how many records we can get Alex to play. You know, well, so they would make when a you were camel. They didn't really bust your hump on the uh, on that, but uh, you had to choose. It, oh, in the beginning, I went as a, I was there as a disc jockey, and I slowly matriculated the thing off over into a talk show, but not yeah. so much that I couldn't do it until I went uh, to the Quake. Yeah. All right, and then when I went there. Uh, the management uh, were still trying to see how many records they could get me to play. I remember yeah. once I did something amazing. I This was when I was at KITS, and they would say, we want you to play a certain amount of records an hour, just you know, get, so get some music in because we're a music station. And I'm going, look, if I play two records an hour, it's not going to keep the music people happy. Right. So one morning I said, for the next hour, I'm going to play more music than any radio station in town. And I took every song I could find that was 45 seconds or less. And there are a, quite a few of them that you can yeah. find. There, there are quickies on albums that people did. You know, the Beatles did. She, the Queen's a very good a hot girl or whatever that thing is at the end of, of Abbey Road. And I played in an hour 35 records. Literally 35 songs. Oh. And then I, from then on, said, this is your mo most music morning show. <laughs> and kept yeah, calling it stuff. that for the rest of the history of the show, your mo mo most music morning show. Because I did what play more music that? than anybody. Oh, that was... Bree uh, wanted to know what year that was. God, it was in... Uh, uh, it was, uh, I, I would say it was maybe 86, 87, somewhere around in there that I did this okay. stunt. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and and also, uh, I had one uh, boss uh, when I was at the uh, Quake, that they, somebody took over the radio station and they said, we want you to play more music. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll play more music. And what I did is, we were in stereo. So I did a talk show on the left channel and played music on the right channel. <laughs> Love it. And then they really got mad at me because they said people who don't have stereo are going crazy because they were hearing <laughs> music and the talk going on. But I literally isolated the music signal from my signal, and so everything on the right channel was music and everything on the left channel was me doing just a regular show. I'll tell you what I did here, station uh, that I was at got, got sold to Disney, and they went to the Disney you know, kids format. Right. 
And the guy that had been uh, the program director mm-hmm. of the old station and one of the owners yeah. wound up at another station. Mm-hmm. And he and I had never, he and I worked together off and on for 15 years, but we never really liked each other because I was one of them old nasty liberals. Mm-hmm. And so I wound up in another station that wanted to go up against these guys. And uh, the, the guy I'm talking about, he's dead now. Uh, he was enamored of WABC, being an East Coast kid. Yeah. And he started doing this thing where, the, you know, first of 15 records in a row or something like that kind of bullshit. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm programming a competitor. And uh, I started running a liner that said, not just counting the music, but playing the music that counts. And it drove him fucking nuts. <laughs> You know, we we use that in just about every break, not just counting them. You know what? This is something that most people don't realize. Uh, What months is advertising the lightest? Uh, January, February. That's when, if you listen to these radio stations, they say we're going to do another 45-minute music this week. (laughs) And the reason they do it is because they have no commercials to run. Exactly. And yeah. so they take it to their advantage. But no, and, and, and people don't realize this. January, you, you couldn't sell. I mean, I guess you could sell time to, you know, some people. But it's it, very cheap. And it, it, nobody wants to buy. They've already used up all their budget at Christmas time. My wife worked at the number one station in this market in the business office. This is before she decided two people in the broadcast business makes no sense. Yeah, Somebody's got to have a job. Uh, And uh, the guy who you probably know who was the operations manager of this station, who was part of the McClendon Roadshow, a guy named Ron Chapman. Mm Mm-hmm who auditioned for a while to replace Paul Harvey. He once told his staff, the music is unimportant. It's only glue to get us to the next set of commercials. First time somebody actually came out and said that to an air staff. Hmm. Just said it up front. I thought, I thought, I thought the commercials were just glue to get us to the music. Well, he looked at it the other way, and in his afternoon, Jock was a good friend of mine. Yeah, well, enough. I, I don't want to get into radio stories. Yeah, so we could tell radio stories all night and, well, and not amount to help means. Bree. Yes, yes, Bree. It, it, it's all advertising. I mean, even the songs are an ad, you know, to sell the songs. So. Well, I, I argued that for the longest time that I believed in payola. And the reason mm-hmm. I believed in it is why shouldn't these record companies pay to get their records played because after yeah. all you play their records and that's how they're going to sell and if you don't play them they're not going to sell alex you must have some good payola stories i've got a few yeah okay uh when i in the late 80s i ran a station uh in pittsburgh mm-hmm. and uh it, it it was a new modern rock type of a thing, mm-hmm. uh, late 80s, early 90s. And the record labels, uh, oftentimes, you know, they, they take you out to lunch or whatever. And I wasn't paying my staff very much. So my music director got an invitation to go to D.C. to see the B-52s and go backstage. And I let him take that because, you know, normally I, I would think we, we're going to play them anyway. That's a, you know, a band that right. clearly we're going to play. But then they also have like 10 other bands that they want to get you to play. Right. You know, they'll take you out to lunch, they'll take you to dinner. So I went to New York City. Uh, I bought my first car and I drove. I didn't have enough money for a hotel. So the first night I stayed in a parking lot in Newark, New Jersey, in a mall, and I slept in the trunk. Uh, you could put the the back seat down. You know, this is how I'm thinking. So I get there the next day and they hear the, the I go to Atlantic Records and they hear the story and they're like laughing all around like the word is spreading there's this program director from pittsburgh who slept in his trunk in in newark new jersey and he's alive to tell the tale and uh so so they they hear about that 
Well, I told him. I told him what I, you know, my trip up there that I, you know, had driven up there and I didn't have really money for the motel. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, stayed in the car, you know. I had money for gas. Anyway, uh, he, he took out these big boxes of CDs. He gave me two of them and he said, you're going to go down to the Iroquois Hotel, put these on the front desk, and they're going to give you a room. So I did that. I, I took the two boxes of CDs and I put them on the desk and they gave me a room key. And uh, then I get a call in the room and they're like, come down to, uh, you're going to watch Adrian Ballou at the bottom line or something like that. And I go down there and I have a great time and you know, they're paying for everything. Yeah. I get back to my room and there, there's a woman in my room. She's laying in the bed, you know, and I'm thinking, what's going on? You know, like, did they give you the wrong room number? Like, because I never gave them ID or anything, you know? So I'm thinking they rented out my room. Like, the CD thing doesn't work, you know? Maybe it was just for Oh, an hour what a naive two. child you were. <laughs> Innocent babe in the woods. Yes. So I ended up sleeping on the floor, and this woman slept in the bed because I had no idea why she was there. I'm serious. Like, it occurred to me like halfway through the evening, I'm like, okay, I think this isn't a mistake. They probably planned this, but I can't do that because then I'm going to have to like play all their records for the next year for like, <laughs> with, you know, uh, I'll be totally on the hook. Now, so what I year didn't, was this? uh, would have been 89 or wait, let me think. Uh, 90. The yeah. Like 89, 90, 90. They were still around. They were on the, the tail end. Adrian yeah. Ballou had just come out, I know, because that's what I was there to see. And um, I went to see another band uh, at the Cat Club called uh, Something Mondays. Uh, and but anyway, the opening act was Matthew Sweet. That's who I really wanted to see. I think he's a great artist. Uh, but then the, the Mondays was the one they wanted me to see. So it was around that time, like when... When those artists, and I think Alex, I think you were at Live 105, mm -hmm. or it, or it was a year or two after that. Yeah. Um, and there was yeah. there was always trade outs. Like uh, at Camel, the program director had a Ferrari that uh, was a trade out from Matthews Top of the Hill Daily City. Do you remember that the red Ferrari? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. What was his name? Rick or something? Well, all uh, I, all, all I know is that when I worked in Houston. Uh, Paola went a little something like this. The promotion guy came in from out of town with a hooker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was pretty much what the promotion was all about. Right? <laughs> now, when I got I knew, started... In fact, I knew one promotion guy who actually gave out tickets. And you would go to the hotel room and give the hooker the ticket. Oh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Do you really? I never... I never took one of the tickets because no, I figured neither. anybody that would sleep with a disc jockey me was neither. too low class for me. Me neither. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, was Paola was already out when Lenny was uh, doing uh, pr uh, pr uh, promotions for A&M because uh, he was promoting uh, uh, people like uh, Sergio Mendez. And, uh, oh, there's oh. a lot of Paola at that time. Oh, really? Yeah. Paola never really went away until the radio stations got into Paola like they are today, where they actually, the record labels actually buy the time to play their records on many stations that play contemporary music. When I got started in 1963, and being a black guy, I wound up at a black station, and uh, while, you know, I was... You know, I was like 16 year, 15, 16 years old, so I didn't even understand how to spell payola. Uh, I knew guys who, if they didn't take the money, their families would not eat because the salaries were so low. Mm. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like the reason that uh, they threw the 19 what 1919. World Series was because the owner of the team was so cheap he didn't give him mo enough money. In fact, he gave him rotten champagne when they won a game once, you know. And finally, they just said, "Hell with it. We'll take the money from the from the gamblers and and throw the game." And that's what happened in the 1919 World Series. Was it 1919? I think that's what it was. Yeah, 
Is that 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 shoeless Joe Jackson thing? Yeah. Yeah. Shoeless Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Pitcher? Yeah. The guy that was the overnight guy at the station that I was at in Houston when you and I hooked back up after losing track of each other for years, Mm -hmm. he made a quick $75 a week. He had to drive a cab during the day to pay his uh, mortgage. Wow. And they they were paying me 175 because I was this slick young kid from the West Coast. Listen, I made, I, you know, in one, case, in one particular case, I made a song a hit. Uh, uh, in fact, I'll tell you what it was. It was B.J. Thomas's I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. Mm-hmm. Good song. Uh, and uh, I was credited with making it a hit. And uh, the guy who was the head of the, it was his manager, Huey Moe. You may have known mm. of Huey Moe, mm. the crazy Cajun. Uh, they offered me, what would you like, a refrigerator? How about a yeah. new suit? How would you like this? How would you like that? And I turned it all down, and I said, I played the record because I liked it. I said, the fact that it became a hit because I played it, I'm happy to do that for you, but I don't want to get paid for it. you know. And I never, I never took a penny for playing anything. Oh, that's what Alan Freed said. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm no Alan Freed. Uh, <laughs> no, Alan Freed took payola, and I think he'd be willing to admit that he did, but it was before anybody said it was illegal. Yeah, you it know. didn't become an issue till 57, It was. One day, one day they decided, oh, let's go after these disc jockeys, uh, and let's find something that we can get them on. How about a thing called commercial bribery? That was actually what they got them on. And when they got uh, Alan Freed, Alan Freed didn't know what he was doing was payola. He just got paid because he played records because he could get hits for people. You know. And the reason they went after disc jockeys, they didn't do it with the guys that were playing uh, Sinatra and Nat Cole and Tony Bennett. They went after the guys playing rock and roll because there was... The fact that that heathen rock and roll was warping them young minds. Yeah, yeah. And he was playing all that that nigra music, that that race music. Next thing you know, they'll be inflaming their passions, and they'll be in the back seats of cars, humping and bumping and yelling and screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, uh, I, I remember once I, I said to somebody, I said, uh, I I just I refuse to take payola. And the guy looked at me and said, you'd never be offered it. You can't make a hit. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I, then the day came when I could. And uh, believe me, people were throwing money at me, and I turned it all down. Uh, you know. Well, I never, took, I never told you how I wound up with James Brown how'd back you, in 67. How did you wind up with James Brown? Because James was notorious about passing out money. And I had never seen a James Brown show, and James would invite all the disc jockeys from uh, who whatever station played his music, particularly the black stations, because he hadn't crossed over yet. Yeah. And he'd hold court backstage after the show. And, the, and his road manager would come along and start passing out 50 and $100 bills, depending upon your air shift and whether or not you selected music. So they get to me and I said, hey, I'm just glad I saw the show and left. Mm-hmm. A couple of months later, the guy that wound up being the head of James Brown Broadcasting, mm-hmm. who had been a salesman there in Houston at the station that I was at, calls me up on the hotline yeah. and says, how'd you like to come to work for James Brown Broadcasting is National PD. I'm 22 years old, 23 years old. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be National PD of, right. of a group of stations. So I took the gig. And I find out later, he said, the fact that you turned down James's money, he liked. He figured he could trust you. Yeah. Now, granted, he never trusted me ever again. Yeah. <laughs> That must have been a hellish gig. Oh man, I tell you. Well, let's not let's not even get into it. But 
put it this way, it was brutal. It took me years to get over that. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, but enough of, of about payola, folks. Uh, you know, the, the hardest kind of payola for me to turn down was when it was, there was sex involved. You know? Uh, you, didn't, you didn't have groupies throwing themselves at you at the radio stations? Um, Don't worry, neither did I. Well, I didn't really until I wound up, be honest with you, until I wound up back in San Francisco. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, uh, that was that was the gig where they uh, had a lot of women throwing themselves at me. I had them, I had, well, no, I had them early on the first trip I had, the first gig, the gig I had in Houston, you know. Uh, yeah, it would happen there, you know. But uh, uh, New York, a little bit. I have a friend who's in Houston now. Yeah. Yeah, he works for the Clear Channel groups there. Well, Clear Channel doesn't exist anymore. It's now iHeart. Right, you know. Well, iHeart Radio. Or iHeart iHeart Media. Yeah, it went from clear channel to cheap channel, as we called it at one time. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, but anyway, let's get back to uh, the uh, the, uh, the stories du jour. So, have you did you get to see the uh, Sasha Baron Cohen show? Yeah, on Showtime. Uh, part of, I started watching it. it. It was awful. Oh, it wasn't awful. I it, so what a can. piece of shit. But it wasn't a piece of shit at all. In fact, my uh, my wife was peeing her pants. It was so yeah. funny. When that uh, whole thing he did with the art dealer was hilarious. Oh uh, yeah, uh, where she gave him the pubic hair. Yeah, I, I think that, that I I think she was in on it. Don't spoil it for me. I got it on yeah, on the machine and I haven't watched it. And yet. you just don't like it because of the, because of the guy. because of the gun thing. The gun part of it was just... Oh, you mean the Israeli commando guy? Yeah. Uh, that, that, that was one of the better ones. Uh, <laughs> you know? Now, but, uh, would, it, would it have been funny if he had have been uh, pranking lefties? He was uh, pranky. Pranked and, you know, Bernie, he pranked, wait a minute. He pranked Bernie Sanders on the show. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he did. And, Equal and, opportunity. And, you know... Bernie Sanders never picked up on the fact that this guy is a moron, and you know, and he should have walked out of there. The the other thing was uh, when he pranked those uh, people in like North Carolina or yeah, something. Yeah, had had uh, they had him over to dinner. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, it it looked like it was all the staged. Best line on the show is when uh, he. T I won't ruin the rest of it for you, Jack. When he talks about the fact that his wife had sex, he was cuckolded by a dolphin. <laughs> and 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 he said, uh, uh, we, after that, we only went, we only started living in landlocked states. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but then he had to spend three months a year in in, in Maui. In Maui, yeah, right. You yeah. know, I, I mean. I can't imagine how people didn't pick up on 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 how stupid this was. I you know, I would have thrown if he was interviewing me in any because of those because situations. You, because you don't know because Phil, you don't know the setup, and how they how they set it up. Uh, you know, uh, you don't know what they were saying that they were doing. Like for instance, they yeah. had at the end they have uh, um, uh, uh, people like Trent Lott and so on. Do, I didn't make it all the way through. Doing, doing PSAs uh, for arming children with guns. Uh, was and, it Trent Lott or uh, no, no, it was, it was Trent, some... Trent Lott? And there was also yeah. another person. I'm trying to remember what his name is now. Uh, but uh, he he talked about it. he addressed the situation. Oh yeah, four year olds, uh, you know, teaching them how to shoot that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, the, we arm children instead of teachers. Oh yeah, that that was yeah, cute. Yeah, um, but uh, but you know, I mean, I I think the show was brilliant. I think it was. I was amazed at how funny it was, oh. and how good it was. And you, as I'm saying, you don't know. You weren't there for the setup and how they approached these people to be on. Yeah. Okay, uh, they were all reading scripts, for instance, when they were doing these commercials about the guns, yeah. uh, and. Undoubtedly, they were approached on a certain level uh, by the production people. 
Uh, I thought it, the, it the, like the best part setup. is what I heard. It, it, they haven't had the Sarah Palin thing on yet, but supposedly she got up and left, so they took her to the wrong airport so she'd miss her plane. <laughs> <laughs> she was the only smart one in the crowd then, because everybody else should have gotten up and walked out on the guy. Well, I thought he, it was you got to realize he's, really been, he's, he's been doing this for years. Borat yeah. was that way, and he he had to stop doing it because too many people could see him coming. Yeah. So he laid off for about I don't know maybe ten years, and now he's back again. You it's kind of like remember the old show. Uh, 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 not people are funny, but um, the candid camera, uh, candid camera. Nah, it is Alan like Funk. It isn't yeah. like that. This is more. It's not like that, but it's kind of like that. In the end of the, the trick was in the setup. Well, it is. It, 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 not really because he does. Char- I like that he does characters, like Alex said. He doesn't really put himself out there a lot, so you don't really see him as much. His characters are good. Uh, he he makes believe so He's far, Phil. Fire. So far, Phil, you haven't said anything terrible about the show, like, and yet you said you didn't like it. There was another show called Punked that uh, yeah. what's his name used to do. Um, Who's? Uh, uh, Alex, he's supposed to play. Uh, he's supposed to play uh, the uh, lead singer from Queen, I think, uh, Sasha, but he backed out of the movie. Uh, Freddie Mercury, I think. Yeah, I can't remember who's playing him now. I don't know. I think the guy from that show you watched is playing him. I forgot the name of it. That uh, computer hacker guy. I forgot. I saw the computer traction group. Right. Anyway. Anyway, um, yeah. Sorry. So, Phil, I mean, uh, so yes. uh, we didn't actually hear from uh, from from um, uh, Jack about his feelings about our dear president and his traitorous actions this weekend. <laughs> Well, I think your New York paper summed it up as far as I'm concerned. Finally, somebody came out and said it straight up like it should be said. What should they say? Open treason. Ah, bullshit. Was that that headline, open treason? Yeah, open treason. Or out, uh, let's see, I got my notes here. You know, I know you don't like the fact that I said it. It was treason, like he said. Yeah, said it was treason. For him to say that he believed uh, Putin and didn't believe uh, uh, the FBI and uh, and, and his uh, advisors uh, is not treason. And Alex, remember when the Republicans were saying, Obama's a communist. And who's the guy that's hanging out with the communists? Um, You know... You're trying to disparage him because he's dealing with an enemy of the world, and he's trying to turn this enemy oh, into yes, a Oh, because he's so person. fuzzy and nice that he'll be able to do it. Well, you don't, you, don't, you don't do it by telling the guy that he's a lying prick, you know? You I, just just, want to know I, I just want to know how much money did they give him, and how can I get a cut of it? In sales, sometimes you got to bury the objection. This so isn't say, sales, Phil. This isn't it is sa- sales. This is international uh, uh, dealings. This has but no. This is not. He's not selling the, fucking real estate. It's the same thing. He's looking right. for peace in the world. You, you don't right. see I, what I, this I, guy's I, trying to do. How is that the same I thing as building a, build, building a half baked building in New York City? Phil, I'll ask this: What does Putin <laughs> want? If Trump is looking for world peace, what does Putin want? Well, obviously, oh, he wants some recognition. Uh, in the in the world arena, oh that, you yes, know, he, like he doesn't he doesn't have enough. Do you know he's the richest man on the planet? Probably. I thought Jeff Bezos was. No, they 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 they, 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 they aren't able to trace uh, Putin's money, but he's supposedly worth considerably more than Jeff Bezos, who, by the way, hundred and fifty billion dollars. Yeah, he passed it today. Yeah. that must have been one Amazon. Day that they had. Hey, I you know? went to I went to Whole Whole Foods before the show because I had to buy flowers and, and a card, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Whole Foods was open, mm-hmm. and the guy says to me, "Are you a Prime member?" Okay. And I said, "Yeah." You know, I said, "Look, I got Prime Video on the phone." He says, "No, no, no. Open up your Prime app. Uh, you hit something with a QR, and uh, he put it up to a reader, and I got ten bucks in my Amazon account." Oh, and uh, some sort of discount on my uh, purchase. I bought a uh, I bought a new Echo. Oh, you yeah. got the Echo? You had on, had I, I got the sh- I got the show because it was a hundred dollars off. That's nice. Yeah, they have good deals. 
I've worked for God, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, they say that uh, they're putting all these listening devices in, in your homes, and you're paying for it so that uh, Amazon can listen to uh, your your private conversations. No, that's and right. Oh, what to sell you. I thought it was so I like this guy. <laughs> Bezos you, is going to take over the world. What were you saying? Did you, call Jack, Philip, did you really believe what you said? Jack, what were you saying? <laughs> I thought it was Putin that was listening to him. Well, maybe Putin is paying Bezos. I don't know about that. He no, Bezos doesn't need the money. Uh, you know, if he's behind Putin in money, he doesn't really need the money. From what I understand, uh, uh, Amazon really hasn't turned a profit. Uh, and and the all of this money that he's got is based on his stock value, which is based on what they think the company is worth. No, but. no, it, it, the company hasn't turned a profit because it it, pl it takes all its profits and puts it back into the company. Uh, we're living in a day and age where you don't have to make a profit to be profitable. I know that sounds weird and it sounds off-putting, but it's true. Well, you should tell it to my banker because they say I take all the money that comes in and I spend it on myself. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, well, you're not you're not Amazon, but Amazon yeah. and Amazon I think is has been making a profit in the last couple of years. Yeah, a uh, little bit. There was a time when they weren't. Right, a uh, long time. There was a time when they believed that he would never see a profit, but he right. believe me that uh, you know uh, I got to tell you when you have an organization that's so big that it literally puts certain businesses out of business. 50% of internet sales are going to be tied to Amazon. Yeah, and more than that, you know, I'm telling you right now, you, you go to your mall. There aren't stores there anymore. They're going empty now because yeah. people are buying everything online. You want to laugh, Alex? Up the, about three blocks away, there's a Walmart by me going out of business. Hell, I mean, I'm 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 of the thinking. If I need a bottle of aspirin, I go to Amazon and order it. Blockbuster, you have it tomorrow. Blockbuster's down to one store. I know in, in Oregon. Someplace in Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. yeah. And you think you're they closed Be down. They, they, can, they closed down the two in Alaska, and what? one of the ones in Alaska was where uh, uh, John Oliver hey, uh, uh, sent them souvenirs of uh, I think it was, it was Mel Gibson's career or something. Uh, and and sent them a whole bunch of stuff, and they they had it in there, and they got closed. They closed down, and the only one left is in Oregon, right? And uh, and they're only open as a blockbuster because they pl play pay blockbuster a certain amount of money to be able to have the name on the door, you know. Oh, so. kind of like Trump. But you know, I mean, why why would anybody go to Blockbuster? What's the reason? Well, you know, you want a specific movie, you can't so, find it yeah, on... Yeah, you can rent it off, you, you just rent it, pull it up on your cable. That's true. You know... But it's not just blockbusters. My wife has not been in a grocery store in <laughs> six months. She orders all of her food online, it gets delivered to the house, the uh, good eating fairy puts it in the refrigerator for her, Occasionally, she will send me out into the cold, dank world to pick up something that she forgot, like she wanted some mushrooms for this evening. So I had to trudge to the store as a good husband and bring her back her mushrooms. And she says, why should I go out in the damn hot Texas sun to get something from the store when this young guy will bring it to the house and put it in the refrigerator for me? I made tonight, I made for dinner, uh, my newest dish, which is I take some thinly sliced chicken breasts, flour them, throw them in butter. Ooh. They cook up in no time flat. I mean, they're really, they cook fast, really fast. Turn them over, put some mushrooms in there, let them bake with, the, with some uh, Marsala wine. Mmm. You like and I, yeah, I made chicken marsala with mushrooms, really? and I served it to her, and she had to had to actually admit for the first time that I fed her, gee, this is really good. It sounds good, yeah. Because yeah, usually you're nice. putting arsenic in it. And you know something? 
I made it in like takes ten minutes. It's like the fastest dish I can make. Yeah, you yeah. could probably even put that on pasta too, Alex. Right? Yeah, you could put it on a bed of pasta. Sure, sure, absolutely. I was almost going to do that. Can't. No, I, 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 I don't know how to boil water, so uh, it's, no, you don't. You shouldn't eat pasta if you're on a low carb diet. Yeah, but I take I, I take a handful, you know. It's yeah. not, not or you can eat whole wheat pasta. You know what hey, I found? I had a bowl. I found, found out I had a bowl of cherries and a bowl of strawberries, and I've been eating cherries and the strawberries. And then I come to find out, you know, which one has the most carbs? Strawberries. No, berries have the least. Cherries. Cherries. Holy, you eat yeah. so small. Yes, yeah, so strawberries. You, strawberries. You can eat a lot of strawberries and still not you it, 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 and take in a lot of carbs. Yeah, blueberries, same thing. Raspberries. Yeah. Yeah. Blackberries. Yeah. You said you used butter. Did you use real butter? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, after I had my heart surgery, I asked my doctor about that. She said, oh, the, between the difference between <laughs> fake butter and real butter, use the real butter because it tastes better and it's actually lower in some kind of fat, maybe uh, uh, saturated fats, probably. Yeah, yeah. Jeff yeah. probably knows about that. You know, yeah. I said, yeah. Hey, but my my chest hurt on Saturday, and well, that's so cause, that's because you had a heart. Yeah, and, and I so I called the advice nurse, and the uh, advice nurse said, "Take a nitroglycerin and come into the uh, ER." Yeah. So I went into the ER. I was there like six hours. Yeah. They they took an X-ray, EKG, blood to see if I had a heart attack. There's a uh, enzyme that mm -hmm. it, it gives off, and I didn't. So they put me on a pill that like releases nitroglycerin over a 24-hour period, That's and right. uh, it's helped. Good uh, idea. You know, what I, I thought you took the nitroglycerin if you were having a heart attack. I didn't realize you took it if you felt tightness in your chest that it opens up the arteries. Right. And, uh, right. So, so when, you know, are, you when are you going to have the operation? August 15th. August 15th. Oh, okay, so we got a way to go. Well, Can we take bets? I might drop dead before then. You know, you got a month. God, <laughs> it is hotter than hell in here, and my air conditioner is on. Yeah, and I'm sweating I, like a pig. This room too. Yeah. And you said, and you said you didn't want to be associated with pigs because people would always try to offer you pork. Let me let me take this off. He was talking about cows. What? You, he said you didn't want to be associated with pigs. I said you were, he was talking about cops. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, complain all you want to about how hot it is there in the Big Apple. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what it is here. I'm up in Texas. It is almost 11 o'clock here, right? Mm. And it is 92 degrees with 60% uh, humidity. Mm. Hey. Uh, other than the weather, Jeff's got a guy running for governor in his state that's a convicted Siri, what's the temperature? felon. Uh, uh, there's two Democrats on the ticket, and one of them, his name is something like Halen or Galen, or uh, and uh, he's uh, he was convicted for misuse of funds or uh, uh, misappropriation of uh, government funds. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, he's running for governor in uh, Connecticut. Uh, are you right. familiar with him? He's yeah. raised eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars, but he hasn't uh, run any commercials yet because uh, it seems as though he's not eligible for um, for public money because he's a convicted felon. Well, the good thing about a guy like that, you know what kind of person you're getting. <laughs> yeah. Somebody actually ran for the governor of Louisiana on the ticket vote for the uh, convicted felon because you know what kind of guy you're getting. Lightning doesn't strike twice. I'm wondering huh? why it's so hot in here. It's only 73 degrees tonight, but it could be a lot of humidity. Yeah. Let me check. Oh, it's getting low, you know. Gross. You know, when you get to be our age, that, that thermostat in your body doesn't work as well as it used to. No, I, I, I'm going to go out and get a new uh, 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 
air, air conditioner. conditioner. Yeah, my guy, my uh, super said I could probably do an 8,000 BTU and not blow anything. So You got a 50% chance of rain. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's going to make it humid. Oh, yeah, well, the humidity preceding it, yeah. I, 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 this is really strange because I should uh, have enough air coming through here. Uh, I go over there, and it's coming through. In Walnut Creek, it's 78. Really? So yeah. it's hotter there than it is in New York right now. Oh. We were up around 90 the other day. Right. Yeah. Oh, today, today I went. Today I went to work out. It's you know, I, 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 it's it's a fine, you know. And I'm walking down, and as I'm going into the gym, I hear thunder. I then go in. I work out. I do about a ha half hour on the on the bicycle, and then I do some stuff on the implements of torture, and then uh, I go back out on the street, and it is a fucking tropical. Thunder cloud. Yeah, like there isn't a monster. It's windy. Crazy. And now I'm walking in this, and I'm just getting fucking. Dr when I, by the time I got home, I had to put all my clothes in the dryer. You know. Uh, does your gym have air conditioning? Yeah. Like no. It's fifteen dollars a month. You know, they got a couple of guys with with with, with fans. Like, yeah, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what quality. you get for fifteen dollars a month, though. Come on in. Yeah. Really, that's basically what you get for fifteen dollars a month. I noticed that they had a towel machine where you could rent towels. Oh, yeah. wow. You know, uh, and, and, but you have to pay in advance. And I said, how much to rent towels? And they said $10 a month. And I'm thinking, yeah. that's about two-thirds of what I'm paying for the membership. I bring my towel. My you bed. know, uh, what if I don't want the membership but I want the towels? Can I do that? You should be able to keep <laughs> the make more money on that. But no, but I they want the, the, you know there isn't anything I'm sure they don't charge for. Uh, we just lost Jack because he has well, to he's do a show. Do his thing. He got to go do a show. Uh, but it was uh, it was just uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, how much uh, it's it's costing me. So you know, I mean, so I I but I refuse to buy the towels. I I bring my own towel because I quite I frankly, you bought a towel. From those guys for five bucks. Well, I bought a yeah, I bought a couple of towels, but now I own the towels, right? So maybe, maybe they were rental towels and you thought you bought them. Maybe they were selling me the rental towels. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so so uh, no, but I mean, I'm paying fifteen bucks a month, and I they that's what it's supposed to cost me, and that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna take, you know, I and I can go in there and use the whole gym and everything, fifteen bucks a month. And now yes, that I now that I'm like going two. now that I'm going like four days a week, they're losing fucking money. <laughs> they don't. They, no, they, 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 guys they, like they count on making fifteen dollars off a lot of people He's who never again. show up. What's it cost them if you use the machine? Most Nothing. of that business makes money by people who don't show up. Right. right. Yeah, if everybody who had a mem if everybody who had a membership to these. Uh, 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 what do you call it? these uh, gyms, gyms. Uh, showed up they wouldn't be able to accommodate them all you know well I, I used to belong to a gym when I lived in the Oakland Hills I uh, would go buy a place in Lafayette and this place was so nice it was like a country club mm -hmm. uh, they would have events and they would have uh, all, all sorts of things they would promote it so you, you'd want to go but mm -hmm. it was a uh, Hundred and seventy-five dollars a month for an individual, and and uh, when I had the family membership, it was like over three hundred and fifty uh, a month. Oh and, my! My uh, wife pays two thousand dollars a year for the gym she yeah. goes to, and I'm yeah. saying, hey, you can come to mine, and you know, it's only I know, but the, yeah, these, these gyms totally that excited. cost that kind of money, they're they're fun to go to. They're uh, you know they they have they're everything they do is nice. It's first class. Yeah, well, mine is uh, mine's fine, you know. They've got a bathroom. Well, I see you Wednesday. Hopefully, I'll have a microphone working. You'll see me Wednesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Oh no, no, Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Hopefully, you'll have a microphone working. How many? Yeah. How, who's are the? What are the odds on this, uh, Scott? That, as to whether uh, his microphone will be working. I'm going to call the company. They have great customer service. I'm going to call them. Uh, not to, <laughs> tomorrow morning. I have something to do, but. 
uh, Thursday morning, and they'll get me up and running. Oh, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they yeah. will. He's on the phone. He'll figure it out. Yeah. He'll yeah. get Trump to help him. Yeah. 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 You're right. Right. Anyway, thank you all. I uh, appreciate your uh, your uh, participation in the show. And uh, it's cooler now that I took my shirt off. Uh, thanks. Everybody, wave goodbye. Say goodbye to those folks. Been a nice night tonight. Always nice having you here. Bye. Okay, that's our uh, citizen panel for tonight, folks. Uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same gab net. Uh, and uh, then at 1 o'clock in the morning, it's Connections or Conniptions coming out of Florida. Uh, that's at 1 o'clock Eastern Day Time. Tomorrow night, uh, starting at 8.30, we have our sports show, our once-a-week sports show, The Arena, with the franchise MC. That's at uh, 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time and 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Yes, it's uh, Damian Chaplin and The Exchange. And then I will see you back again here tomorrow night. 10 o'clock, same, uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. <laughs>